Hey everybody, so I've been working on this bag for a little while now. This is going to be its own two-part video series. Um, but we have one little part in here that just doesn't, I mean it fits because I'm making the bag, but I feel like I, I wanted to pull it out and have a, its own video because it is a fun skill on its own. And what we're talking about is we need a little handle here. It's going to be the secondary handle because we have our crossbody is going to attach to these. Um, but we're going to do a rolled handle, tubular handle, whatever you want to call it. Now, you can do these in a bunch of sizes. They're really, really fancy. They add such a nice feel to the user experience of your piece. And they're fairly simple to do. So we're gonna get into it and show you just how to make yourself a nice rolled handle for any sort of bag or application that you want. So to make a rolled handle like this, you need something to roll the leather around, and that's usually a core. Now, you can use tons of different stuff for cores. This is a nylon rope, and this is pretty big. So like if you were making a duffel bag or something, you know, you can see compared to this is just a four millimeter leather cording. This is very substantial. Because on our bag, this is just a small secondary handle. We want it out of the way, just something you can hang on a hook or grab it to put it on your shoulder. I'm not gonna use the nylon. I'm just gonna use, this is four millimeter leather core, uh, leather cording. The other couple things we're gonna need, I'm using um, for the outside of our handle. This is a six, seven ounce leather. And then to line this, and it's actually gonna lock our cording in as well, I just have a piece of very thin leather. This is, I think this is about two ounces, and we're gonna do some more skiving. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to cut a strip of our leather, we need to get the right length. Now, I've been doing a little testing. Um, this is a seven inch piece of cord, and it's a little big. So we're gonna do a six inch piece of cording. We're gonna cut that first. So we have our core cut, and I said six inches, I meant seven inches. Um, the next thing we need is our sort of leather pattern to wrap this in. Now, this is where you get to make a lot of interesting design decisions because you this part where your handle attaches to your bag, you can make this a, a lot of different shapes, right? You can go with a point as more of a, a fancy French style. We're gonna go with a squared off look because this bag is gonna kind of have like a an old mailbag style, US Postal Service bag style to it. And all of that information is going to dictate what kind of pattern you cut. So if you're going with an end that looks like this, right? It's kind of, well, let me do it facing you. So you have two points and then your handle comes up like this. Your pattern, that's a horrible drawing, but your pattern is probably gonna look like this. So you're gonna notch this in your cord is gonna go here, and then you're gonna trim this off. So this is where you're gonna stitch, and you're gonna trim that off. The way that we're gonna do it is I'm just gonna cut a single strip like this. And then once we have our cording glued in and wrapped up and stitched, then I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna trim it off this part by hand. And what that's gonna allow me to do, if you can kind of see a side profile here, that's gonna allow me to make sure that from this seam to where the bag connects, this is totally flat. But this is one of those things that's gonna be more like woodworking than it is leather. We're gonna trim this down slowly and slow, and you can see I'm not even done trimming this one that I made because it was a sample to make sure I had the right size. Um, we're gonna sand it and we're gonna trim it so that when this lays on the bag, everything is nice and flat. I want my attachment points to be an inch and a half wide. So I'm gonna start by cutting an inch and a half strip of leather. Now, as far as the length is concerned, I know that this is seven inches and I know I want two inches on either side, but I wanna give myself a little bit extra. So we're gonna do a 13 inch strip. That'll give us three inches on either side with our seven inch um, cord in the middle. Once we have our strip cut, we're gonna flip this over and make a few marks on the back. First thing we're gonna do is, we know that we have three extra inches on either side. So we're gonna mark three inches there, and we're gonna mark three inches there. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark another half inch in, and this is gonna be the overlap for our liner that's gonna come up from here. Last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mark a line down the center. Now remember, you need three marks to make a straight line. And all this is going to do is let us know when we glue our cording in, or whatever core you're using, 
that it's centered and it just kind of helps. You can you can center it kind of as you're gluing. I just we're already here so we might as well make a nice mark. Okay so these don't have to be exact but we just want to carry this apart around here like that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to measure a half inch in because I'm using, and I'll, this is one of the reasons I really like using leather cording, I'm going to measure a half inch in on both of these ends. Then I'm going to take my skive knife and I'm going to bevel this down as best I can. So now you can see here we have our bevel and this kind of fills our half inch little section that we that we drew out. The reason we have this section is because we're going to take our thin leather and we're going to lay this over top. And what that's going to do is, this is a finished one, when we fold this up to sew it, the inside of our handle is going to be lined. So if you're doing the whole square ring thing, you'll have a nice liner here. But also, if we just put our core in and we fold this over, there is a chance that this core can work itself out over time. If we put our core in and then we lock it in with a liner, when we fold that liner to stitch it, you can see kind of right, well, this side's a little easier to see. You can see kind of right here, this is going to lock this core in for good. It's not going anywhere. So that's why we're doing this. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna apply glue to everything here. We're gonna apply some glue to the back of our core because this one's really small, it's kind of all over the place. I'm just gonna apply it to the back, stick it down, and then I'll apply more when we're ready to roll it. While that glue is drying, I'm gonna walk you through cutting out um, the little liner pieces and skiving everything down so that we can stick these on when this is all dry. So while that's drying, we're going to get our liners ready. And you can see I just have sort of random pieces here. The most important thing is you just want to make sure that you have um, one flat edge on each one and make sure they're longer and wider than you need them. And the big thing here is that on our flat edge, I'm going to make as wide of a skive as I can. I'm going to thin this out as gradually as possible because that'll blend in really nice once we get this glued down. So you can see, even if you get a little cut off, no one's ever gonna see this because this is getting rolled in here. We just want it very gradual so that we don't have a big bump once our handle is uh, rolled together in its tu final tube form. Also, never skive on cutting boards. This is a horrible idea, but it gets the job done real quick. So there we go. And now, I guess I can apply glue to these um, while this is drying as well. Once everything's dry, we gotta just start kind of applying things and doing a little more gluing, just getting everything put together. So we're gonna take, I only glued half of our core down and I glued the opposite side of our bevel because we want our bevel to face up here because this is gonna be the inside of our handle. So we're just gonna go through and following our center line as best as I can, I'm gonna glue this down first. And you can see all of these little marks we made are really helpful. It doesn't have to be totally perfect. It'll work itself out when we get it all rolled up and that kind of thing. And then if you want, you can kind of tap it down a little bit. And seat that glue. And I know this looks very small, and it is. But remember, we have a six or seven ounce leather around it, so we're gonna end up with some, some heft. And if you go, bigger, you can get a really solid looking handle. And I'm like, I have very large hands, I'm like 6'4". So in my hands, this doesn't look as big as it is, but this is a very substantial piece. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna apply a little bit of leather, or of glue. We're gonna apply kind of around the whole thing and we wanna get it, we don't wanna go light with this. Um, some people don't use glue on their cores and that kind of thing. This is one of the projects that I find a really, really strong glue um, really helps to get this 
handle feeling as best as you can get it. And it's also one of the projects where they look pretty daunting when you when you when you look at them and you and you haven't done one before they look daunting but once you put one together you're like wow that's a pretty simple pretty simple project it's they're also really fun and just it adds just so much to the design so now that we have all of our, everything glued we're going to take our liner pieces and remember this is like a six seven ounce this is like a two ounce that we've skived down and this is why we drew these half inch marks i want this liner to overlap our core a little bit. That's what's gonna lock it in. So what I'm gonna do, and you can see that's why I gave myself plenty of extra because we'll trim this after. I'm gonna line this up and I'm gonna kind of mold it around and stick it down. And this is, you know, sometimes we use hammers to stick things down. This is more of a bone folder um, project. This whole thing is really. Um, you wanna make sure that this is really well stuck down which again goes back to using a really good glue. And also keep in mind that this edge is gonna be rolled up to here. So we're gonna to have to scuff this up and reapply more glue, but if you have any marks or anything like that, this is never gonna be seen. We're more concerned with this being very well stuck down. And see now how our liner, very, very slim, but it's gonna lock this core in. So should down the road, and we're talking years and years here, this glue loosen up or whatever, the core is not gonna be able to go anywhere because it's gonna be locked into our liner. What I am gonna do, because this is a sort of a waxed, hot stuffed leather that we're using, I'm gonna scuff this up before I reapply some, le some glue, but I don't wanna go past this core because from the back side, you are going to be able to see the core ends like deep in here, but you don't want any scratches beyond that if you do end up peeking in there. So I'm just going to be careful to not go past our core when I scuff up this leather. And we're scuffing this up just so that we make sure we have the best bond because these are also the ends. So we want to make sure that our ends are nice and tight for our glue to stick um, because it'll just make it that much nicer of an end product. So now comes the rolling part. Now you can do this a bunch of different ways. A lot of people will pinch just the two ends in. Um, I kind of like to get a nice bend going throughout the whole piece where it's gonna roll. And then I just start from one end and kind of go from there. And we're gonna trim a lot of this. So you don't have to worry about these matching up perfectly, although I like to try because that means I'm getting a nice even roll. And this is also why you wanna use a really good glue because the glue is gonna be a really big help here. And we're just gonna work our way down. Don't worry about everything being too tight, but you kinda wanna push up from the bottom because our main focus is getting a nice tight fit along this core. And we're just going to work over here like this. And if we do it right, hopefully, yep, we'll see that our skiving matches up at this end. And you can kind of like roll down and if you want the seam to, to match up perfectly, which is good. You don't want a super jagged seam. And then we're not going to use a hammer for this. This is 100% uh, bone folder situation here. So I'm gonna grab my bone folder. I'm gonna go in and this is not only gonna set our glue but it's also gonna set our stitch line. So don't be afraid to push really hard on this and to bend this over because we want to get a really good line here. all the way along that core. And it's gonna be difficult towards the ends where you have the multiple layers, but just keep going for it. And then we'll flip this over and we'll do the same thing on the other side. There 
we go. And we talk about this sometimes, this is one of those things where it looks worse before it looks better. Don't worry about any little inconsistencies. When we stitch this up, everything's gonna look great. So the one thing I like to do, it's very important that we get a couple stitches into our liner, because that's gonna lock all this in. So I like to take my scratch all and I kind of peek in and see where my line is, where I drew my line to start scraping to glue. And I'll make a little mark on the outside with my scratch all. And that tells me I need to get a stitch up to there. Ideally, you'll have two or three stitches in this liner. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side as well. Just a little mark. And then we're pretty simple. It's pretty standard going from here. You just wanna make sure that you're really hugging up to this core with your stitching iron. And you're stitching all, and you're punching all the way through. Well, if that's your stitching method. If you're using, if you're just marking and then putting this in a stitching pony, you know, obviously that's the other way to do it with a single awl. So now when we go through and stitch this up, it's just a pretty basic stitch line. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a double stitch on the end, and this end will have the back stitch, so it'll just happen naturally. But that's just going to add, there's a lot of tension with these layers and stuff, that's just going to add a little extra strength and pull this closed even more, because even with, with mine, the glue, because there's so much tension you have this flaring. The glue isn't probably going to stick very well. It'll do its job, but it's not going to stick very well. So by doing a double stitch, we're going to do the rest of the, the pulling and close this seam all nice like that. And then we're just going to stitch down the rest and backstitch like normal on this side. And so now that we have everything sewn together, you can really see we're starting to uh, look like a handle. Now, next step is we need to trim this seam because we don't want it this thick. So what I've done is I've set my calipers, and there is a bunch of ways for you to do this. You're generally always going to want to leave some extra here because that gives you enough um, material to kind of get that tension down. If you try to get it just perfect, you're going to have a really hard time squeezing this, getting it nice and tight, getting the shape right. So I have my calipers set, and what I'm going to do is, I'm going to start probably like one or two stitches in to my stitch line, and I'm going to mark a line, and this is going to be a cut line, and then I'm going to go down to one or two stitches here. Now this does take some practice, you have to be careful, and you can use, you can use a round knife, you can use a skiving knife, some people make jigs for these if you make these a lot. I'm just going to use my blade because it's what I'm most comfortable with. What I like to do, I have my seam here. I like to start off the edge and I'm going to bring my knife in for like kind of a taper and then I'm just going to follow that line and you don't have to cut through all the layers at once. You can go slowly and do multiple passes. And we're just going to work our way down. But again, be very careful. You have a lot of layers. You have a lot of tension here. You don't want to slip. And then once I'm at this end, I'm going to fade that off that way. So you can see I didn't cut all the way through. Now I'm going to go back and do another pass. Just slowly. This one's a little bit easier. Slowly following the line that I already made. And 
And there we go. And you can see it's not totally perfect. I'm gonna sand this down now. And this is, again, like I said, this part is a lot more like woodworking, at least the way that I do it. Um, I'm gonna go in with a sanding block and I'm gonna really even this out so this is nice and straight. You can also go in if you see, like there's a pretty obvious hump there. I can go in and just kinda, that was more due to me not holding the blade straight. Cut that and now we're starting to get more straight. It's very lumpy, but once I get it sanded down, we'll be good to go. So I'm not gonna bore you with the sanding. We're just gonna work it with sandpaper. And the other thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna really focus on this transition and get this nice and flat. I'm gonna go around and trim all this stuff up too. So here's what we got going on. <laughs> so here's what we got going on. So here's what I've got going on. I have my bone folder and I have, I'm using this as kind of like a flat surface, almost like a, like a sanding block and just a little piece of sandpaper. And just going through, this was also nice if you have um, like a like a powered sander, like a drum sander. This is, makes quick work of this. But if you don't, I like to show you how to do things by hand. So this flat surface will let us level this edge if our trimming isn't perfect, right? And then when we go into this transition, you can see here how we want this to kind of not be totally flat, but we do want to get this flat. So we're just gonna work this slowly little by little till we get the transition we're going for. And it's gonna be different for everybody. This is a small piece of paper. Um, it's gonna be different for every person and every piece, preference, etc. But I'm just gonna work that so I get it flat. And this is before we do any trimming or um, beveling or burnishing. We just wanna get the shape right. And the reason we wanna do this is, well, let me show you, let's go down here and I'll show you. So this is the back of, the, of our bag and our little handle is gonna go right here. This is just a scrap, but say we had just a typical flat handle. We would just put it right there and that's it. It's one plane, that's all we have to worry about. It's gonna lay flat. With our rolled handle, because we have folding and a lot of different planes, when we bend like this, we want that to be fairly even so that when we set this down, everything lays nice and flat. You see that? So because we worked this really nice, now not only is this laying flat, but that transition into from attachment point to handle is gonna look really nice when we see our bag, I don't know if I can do this on camera, from a side profile, right? You're not gonna have your handle and then a big chunk coming out or anything like that. It's gonna transition very smoothly. And when you take the little bit of extra time to make a roll handle like this, that's one of the benefits. You get to add um, just another design element, more cues that say, this is what I want this bag to feel like, or this is what I want the, the vibe of this piece to be, right? So I'm really happy with this. So now the only thing we have left to do, short of attaching it, which we'll do in our bag video that's coming up next week, um, we're just gonna do the burnishing, which is really important because remember, this is an attachment point. You're interacting with the piece by holding this. So we want this to feel really nice. So if you're gonna stitch this to a bag, you wanna edge this entire thing, get the right shape and everything. Um, I'm not quite sure yet how much of this thing I'm gonna trim this down. So I'm just gonna show you how to do, and you've seen all this before, but we're just gonna do the part that you hold on to. So we're just gonna take our beveler. This is a size zero from Weaver. That's the one that I like to use the most. I know some people like to use much bigger ones, um, but what I like to do is, I like to use a size zero and then I sand with finer grit sandpaper to get my final curve. So we have that done. Now we're gonna take, this is 320 grit sandpaper and we've already sanded with 220. And we're just gonna slowly work our curve. Now just be careful because you have extra dimension here. You don't wanna knock this with sandpaper and scratch it. and it doesn't take a whole bunch. And then you can work this down if you want it to be glossy. You know, you can do it 500, 600, whatever you want. This is gonna gloss up naturally because people, you know, someone's gonna be holding it. So I generally find that 320 is about as far as you need to go on most leathers to get a nice shiny edge without going into the whole super gloss thing, which is awesome, don't get me wrong, but that's not really what we're going for on, the, on this bag handle. So 
So normally what I would do, if I was burnishing a wallet or whatever, is it would go straight to canvas. Because we're touching this, and again, I can't emphasize this enough, this is a contact point. This is how someone's going to interact with this piece. So we want this extra smooth, super comfortable. I'm just going to take a tool handle, any wood, if you have a slicker, you know, that works too. I'm just going to do a little bit of extra slicking with this tool handle before I go in for the polish with canvas. And what that's going to do is that's just going to lay those fibers down even a little bit more. And you can do this usually, you know, when you when you burnish with gum drag and canvas, you want to let it kind of tack up and dry a little bit. You can slick this down like this with an with a piece of wood or a handle when it's a little more damp. And then you let it dry a little bit. And then when you hit it with your canvas or whatever you're shining this up with, it's going to be a little bit more smooth. And that's just so it feels a little nicer as you're holding it. This is just some pure beeswax. One final step, we're going to apply a nice layer of this. And I find if you're not painting the edges or anything like that um, with a handle, this does a really good job of, you know, no, no matter how, how much you burnish this, someone's picking this up, putting it down over and over again, the fibers will tend to sort of fray over time. This is just another way um, to prevent that from happening. It's, you know, something's always probably going to fray a little bit. But the good thing about doing a natural burnish like this is, even if you're not in possession of the bag anymore, you can always say, okay, here, take a little bit of water, take a little canvas, slick it down, a little beeswax, and you can do this at home. And there we go. So now we have a super comfortable handle, and I'll show you the last step next. So before we install this, I want to get a nice little bend in it to keep its shape, so just a little bit of thread here. Um, I'm going to guesstimate, we're just going to kind of tie this up. And I like to do this kind of overnight, this might be way too small, but we'll see. Oh no, we're good. I like to leave this overnight just to let it kind of get a good shape to it. It looks a little extreme, but it'll kind of spring back out after a while. Okay, and there we go. So we have our finished um, tubular rolled handle, whatever you want to call it. And if you want to see us apply this, put it onto a bag, make sure you watch next week's video. We have a two-part video coming on this uh, saddlebag that I'll make of my mom. So until then, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.